divining with playing cards. Do you love playing with cards? I've always been fascinated by them, loved holding them in my hands, staring at the images, and I want to show you some ways of looking at the cards that are different. You can easily look up fortune telling with playing cards. It's called cartomancy, and there's plenty of good information out there. But what I'm going to show you is how to divine using playing cards. Divining is different than fortune telling. Uh, what I want to do here is to help you understand the subtle and the hidden energies of the cards so that you can read them clairvoyantly rather than memorizing what their individual meanings are. So let's begin with the suits. The suits, as we all know, are diamonds, spades, hearts, and clubs. Now each one of those suits represents an element, earth, air, water, fire. Just about every metaphysical study or discipline uses these four elements as a foundation for gaining insight into someone. For example, when I create your astrological chart, I'll usually look to see which element is most prominent. And it's also one of the first things that jumps out at me when I look at your hands during a palmistry reading. Why are the elements so important? It's because the elements represent the four bodies of a human being, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual or creative bodies. And we're usually influenced more by one than the other. So as you play cards with someone, you can immediately get a sense of who they are simply because of the cards they draw or they play. And you'll find various interpretations of which suits match up with which element. I use a fairly traditional one, which is diamonds represent the earth, spades the air, hearts are water, and clubs are fire. So, to reiterate, diamonds, the earth, represent your physical body. Spades, the air, represent your mental body. Hearts are water and represent your emotional body. Clubs, or fire, represent your creative or spiritual body. So now you're going to pay attention to the numbers of each card, ace or one, through 10. Numbers are not so much a symbol or representation for an abstract concept. They're true. They're an essential part of our existence. And because of that, they each have their own feeling. In my short video called Wonderful Numbers, I do go into more detail about why numbers are so essential in divination work and how you can use them to hone and deepen your own clairvoyant skills. But for now, I'm just going to briefly give you the basic feeling of each number, 1 through 9, and uh, 10 is the, is the 1 plus 0, which becomes 1. So 1 is the beginning, it's wholeness. 2 is always in relationship to each other. It's positive, negative, creative, reception, receptive, it's pull and push. Three is a harmonious synthesis. It's the moment when things are really starting to come together. Four means security, stability. That's what it feels like. Five is change. It's transformation and growth. It's a number of freedom. Six is the double three. It's another very harmonious number. It's accomplishment. You've come a long way. So you can take a little rest while knowing that more still lies ahead of you. Seven is a number of personal and spiritual power. It's growth and transformation by going inward. Eight represents ideals manifested in the world. And nine is the fulfillment, the completion, and the end of the journey. Ten, as I said earlier, is really the one, the, the completion and the beginning of the next, really letting go of the journey so you can start fresh. So learning how to divine with numbers begins simply by noticing them. Pay attention to numbers all around you, and especially when you're playing cards. You don't have to analyze them, you don't have to look up their meanings. Just try to divine the feeling that each one gives you, and that's how you'll continually be activating your own clairvoyant skills. You'll also need to become 
familiar with the energy of the court cards that are in our playing cards. We have jacks, queens, and kings. The archetypal energy of a jack is youthfulness, it's optimism, newness, adventure, and naivete. The archetypal energy of a queen is devotion, it's feminine, receptive, nurturing. And the archetypal energy of a king, it's responsibility, decision-making, action, and power. So enjoy playing with cards and enjoy divining the hidden mysteries that underlie one of our favorite games of all time. I'm Winslow Elliott, and if you'd like to find out more about me or explore other courses I offer and books I've written, please go to winslowelliott.com. You can get in touch with me through the contact page, and I look forward to that. And in the meantime, I send you love 